G'day guys, well I've got 10 four drive tips that could potentially save your life. Let's see what they are. So how do you make sure that your vehicle is prepared for your next off-road adventure? Because the outback can be a harsh environment that is punishing and unforgiving for vehicles and their drivers. So what would you equip your vehicle with to make sure that you return home safe and sound and full of adventurous stories? So let's go through some of the basics in preparing your four drive for the next off-road adventure. So number one is service your vehicle regularly. Now, it doesn't matter if you're going away for two days or two weeks. You need to make sure that your vehicle is in a sound mechanical condition before you head off. So have your vehicle serviced regularly by a qualified mechanic. And if you're heading away on a big trip into remote areas, you wanna make sure you have your full drive serviced at least two weeks before you go. That way it gives your mechanic plenty of time to fix any major problems just in case they've got to order some parts in. So number two is tyres. Now there's no point heading away on a big trip in the Victorian high country or say across the Simpson Desert on highway tyres. Now a good set of all-terrain tyres or mud terrain tyres is absolutely essential and if you're not going to get a new set of tyres for the big trip you want to make sure that your current set still has plenty of tread left on them. And for some remote areas, you might consider taking two spare tyres and a puncture repair kit, and even maybe a few tools like tyre levers and bead breakers, just in case you gotta do a repair on the side of the road. So number three is bull bar. Now, a bull bar is a vital piece of protective equipment for your full drive. An animal strike could result in expensive damage or potentially end your trip. Now, a good, strong, professionally fitted bull bar is an absolute must for any vehicle that's heading out of the CBD. Okay, so number four is fuel. Now, it's really important that you understand and know the fuel consumption of your full drive, because it wouldn't be fun having to sit on the side of the road and wait for help to come along if you run out of fuel. And if you're heading off road, your vehicle's gonna use a lot more while you're driving in four wheel drive, and even more so if you're driving on the sand. Now I know that my patrol gets around 830 k's from 120 litres, which is what this has got from standard. Now that equates to around about 14 litres per 100. Say worst case scenario, if my fuel range blew out to say 20 litres per 100 while I'm out four wheel driving, I still know I've got around 600 k's on that 120 litres that this comes with standard. So take at least 20 litres more than what you plan to use because I'd rather have more than what I need than to have to go looking for it. I'd much rather come home with half a tank of fuel still in the tank than run out somewhere on my trip. Now carrying a lot of fuel can be difficult and probably the safest way of doing so is by having a long range fuel tank fitted to your vehicle. Now whilst carrying diesel in jerry cans either on the back of your full drive or inside, finding somewhere safely to store petrol is difficult. It's illegal to carry petrol in jerry cans and have them mounted to the back of your full drive because in the event of a rear end collision, these could explode. And as far as the dangerous fumes go, well, you shouldn't really carry them inside your vehicle. So where do you carry jerry cans? Well, you could certainly carry them up on your roof rack, but then you've got to be also careful about how much weight you do put up there because that'll affect your vehicle's center of gravity and how it handles on the road. Okay, so number five, is packing your roof rack. Now, packing your roof rack correctly is very important to ensure that your vehicle handles safely while you're driving down the road and doesn't place any undue stress on your vehicle. And make sure your roof rack and roof weight restrictions are not exceeded and that the load is spread evenly across the roof and tied down securely. So what do I mean by roof rack and roof carrying capacity? Well, there's two things you gotta take into account here. I know this roof rack is engineered and designed to carry 150 kilo. And I also know that my patrol with this gutter design here is also designed to carry 150 kilo. Now I've got to take the weight of the roof rack off that and the roof rack itself is 26 kilo. So that leaves me, I know I can carry up there 124 kilo, but that's at its max limit. So there's a couple of things to think about when you're loading up your roof. So number six is suspension. Now, your suspension is gonna get a severe workout when going off-road, so it's a great idea to get some aftermarket suspension. Now, shocks and suspension in good working order will have a huge effect how your vehicle handles both on and off the road. So ensure your suspension is adequate to carry the extra load of your gear and the terrain that you plan to drive. 
Number seven is driving lights. Now, if you're planning to drive into the night or even in the early mornings, a good set of driving lights is a valuable investment. And not only will a good set of driving lights allow you to see further and wider along the road, they'll also help to stop your eyes from getting tired. And squinting into the distance lit up by your standard high beams is not good for your eyes or your safety. Now driving lights will allow you to see animals before it's maybe too late and also you'll be able to see upcoming road and track conditions. Number eight is spare parts. Now a good range of spare parts should be carried to suit your vehicle, particularly if you're going into remote areas. Now depending on where you're going, you also may consider carrying spare shocks and springs, particularly if you're towing a camper trailer. And if you're a bit unsure, we'll have a chat with your mechanic. He'll be able to give you some advice on what spares you should carry for your vehicle. But there's a range of spares that you could certainly take from a good quality toolbox, you know, with all the spanners and sockets and that sort of thing that's gonna fit your vehicle. But a few actions you might like to take are jumper leads and hoses and belts and wire and zip ties and duct tape. Actually, don't leave home without zip ties and duct tape because they fix everything. Okay, so number nine is secure the items that you've got in the back of your four-wheel drive. Now this is where a cargo barrier comes in very handy because it's gonna secure all the items I've got in the back of my four-wheel drive here and stop them going forward into the passenger area in the case of heavy braking or even worse, a rollover. And the other good thing about having a cargo barrier in the back of your four-wheel drive, it gives you so many tie-down options so you can secure your load in the back here so it's not gonna move around while you're driving. And if you have to store any gear in the passenger area of your full drive and you've got some spare seats, well, take advantage of those empty seats and use those seat belts to help secure any items that you need to carry in there. Okay, so the last one in this list is number 10, and that's first aid gear and safety devices. Now, you would not leave home on any sort of a trip without at least a good quality first aid kit and know how to use it. It's a great idea to do a certified first aid course where you will learn emergency first aid and procedures. Here's just a couple of first aid kits that, that I carry in my patrol. Now this one here is a fantastic kit, lightweight, and it's well designed for snakes and spider bites. Um, you know, you could throw it in your backpack if you were going out there hiking, or you know, you could a couple of straps here, you could certainly attach it to your belt. Doesn't take up a lot of room, but a fantastic kit. And then I just got my bigger one up here, where you know, got all my bandages and all that sort of stuff tucked away in that one. And the last one that you would not leave home without, and that's one of these sort of items here. Now the PLB, fair dinkum. You're crazy if you haven't got one of these. Um, again, I've got a video I'll chuck up there, the difference where talk about the PLBs and the EPIRBs, but these are a fantastic kit. Again, lightweight, um, waterproof. Again, attach it to your belt, fair dinkum. You wanna get one of these if you're going any sort of remote sort of uh, exploring, get yourself a PLB. And then you could also look at, you know, sat phones and, and HF radios, provide your license because a license is required to use a HF radio. But look, there you go, guys. That's the list that I've put in, 10 safety items that could potentially save your life if you're going to start doing some remote travel. But that's only 10 for a starters. I'm sure there'll be a stack of other items that we could put into this list. So throw them down in the comments down below. And that way, everyone can learn off my 10 and then the others that you might want to add into the list. So until then, guys, I look forward to seeing you out in the bush someday.